welcome to another episode of Rai Vision Dialogues. Uh, and today I'm in conversation with a, a very proud son of Fiji uh, and to uh, tell uh, about uh, this uh, uh, very uh, great uh, person who has done a huge amount of work in Fiji as well as uh, in Australia since uh, migrating to uh, Australia. You can see him on, his, uh, on our screen. And for those few people who do not uh, recognize this face, uh, I'll tell you, uh, is Shri uh, Hari Sharmaji. Welcome to the conversation, uh, Panditji. Thank you. Thank you, Satish. Uh, let me say that uh, as a, uh, you know, uh, Sanatan Vedic culture, uh, we refer, uh, I refer to a person who has attained uh, a certain amount of knowledge uh, uh, in a community through work and, and education. We call them Panditji. So I fondly call uh, Sharmaji Panditji. Panditji, uh, please, uh, instead of me trying to introduce you, uh, I will invite you to introduce yourself to the audience today. My name is Harish Sharma, former resident of Fiji. I served as a parliamentarian for more than three decades and uh, eventually migrated to Australia in 2002. I was a practicing lawyer in Nandi and uh, president of Sanatan Dharam Pratinidhi Sabha for 10 successive years. I originally come from No Story. Then, after qualifying for the first time, I moved to the Western yeah. District from where yeah. I migrated. Thank you, Panditji. Uh, now, I think as uh, uh, myself, uh, I was not in Fiji during most of the time when you had uh, your professional and political career in Fiji. Uh, but before we uh, delve more into it, uh, let's uh, go back because uh, we all are descendants of Grimitius. Uh, so I will uh, take you back to those days, uh, you know, I, to the Grimit days, uh, what you recall of your Grimitia ancestors. And then after that, uh, we'll go uh, towards uh, your own parents who they were, where they lived. Very well, Satish. Our great-grandfather, Tulsi Ram, and our great-grandmother, Parvati, came to Fiji from the village of Chandpo in the district of Azamgarh in Uttam Pradesh, India. They were one of the first migrants from India to Fiji. On 23rd of January, 1988, they registered at Banaras, present day Banarasi, as emigrants to Fiji, stating they are cast as Chhatri and Thaku respectively. From Banaras, they came to Calcutta, where they were accommodated as endangered laborers at a depot for three weeks. Then they boarded the ship Hereford, which sailed for Fiji Islands on the 14th of January, February 1988. The ship reached Fiji on 28th April 1988. It is interesting to note that. Uh, Just give me a minute, Satish. Okay, take your time, please. Ah, it is interesting to note that my grandfather was born on board the Hereford on 17th April, 1988 in Fiji waters. 
He was registered as Kalika Prasad, but was generally known as Jamuna Prasad. Okay. After completing five years of indenture in the Rewa area, Tulsi Ram and his wife Parvati, my great grandparents, returned to India with their five year old son, Jamuna Prasad, my grandfather. They settled in the village of Revati in the district of Basti in Uttar Pradesh. My grandfather's life makes an interesting story. In his, in his homeland, he studied Hindi and carried out the duties of a Sanatan priest. At the age of 19 or 20, quite late those days, grandfather Jamna Prasad enrolled at the Kashi Vishwavidyalaya to study Sanskrit and astrology. He married Sringari, my grandmother, at the age of 23. On or about the 4th of April, 1912, our grandfather gave birth to a son who was registered as Govardhan, that's my father. And as was the practice, given the name of Pratap Chandra Sharma. Thus, my father was born in India, but he didn't stay there for very long. On 4th June 1912, my grandfather, my grandparents, and their son Pratap Chandra Sharma registered at Gorakhpur as emigrants to Fiji and left Calcutta on board the SS Ganges on 12th June 1970, 1912 for Fiji. My grandparents saved their five-year girmit in Nausori district. It is a myth that has been perpetuated by the colonialists that all indentured laborers were illiterate. My grandfather, Jamna Prasad, certainly wasn't Ill illiterate. He was a competent scholar of Sanskrit, Hindi, and astrology, and was in obvious demand to, te to teach Hindi and explain the great epics of the Ramayana and the Mahabharata and perform religious rituals as a pandit. After indenture as free laborers, my grandparents and their son, that's my father, settled on a 20 acre freehold property at Sawani now, sorry. <coughs> Part of the property is still retained by our family. My grandfather was something of a public intellectual. During indenture in the later years, the Hindu religion was sometimes viciously condemned by Christian missionaries. My grandfather valiantly defended his faith, often on a soapbox at the open grounds where the present municipal market stands. That is in Nosori town. Mm -hmm. Grandfather Jamna Prasad was a simple Brahman, learned, highly disciplined, generally a man of few words, almost an introvert. But he did not turn away from his responsibility as an educated member of his community. People of his generation long remembered him as a writer, poet, a scholar, and a respected pandit. He had three sons and a daughter. Grandfather gave them all lessons in Fiji. My father would go wherever grandfather went to perform his priestly work or to recite the scriptures. He would listen to the words grandfather uttered as he expounded on the great epics, observe the rituals with interest, and slowly began giving discourses on religious Hindu subject in very simple language. With grandfather's father's encouragement, the world of poets and poetry opened up for him. The young mind absorbed all, all it could about the way poetry was composed and recited. There was a long journey ahead of him as a writer, that is my father. 
My father became an avid reader. He read whatever came to hand, books, magazines, newspapers. He cultivated an independent mind and the farm in Saveni became his domain. <clears throat> All my siblings were born and brought up in that domain. I was taken away by my matern maternal grandparents, uncles and aunts in Naitasiri, near Baulevu Landing. Thus I missed having close knowledge of my father's attraction for poetry and Hindi literature. I returned to Sawani once in a while as a visitor. My father was physically very strong. He would travel on his bicycle from the farm in Sewani to Baulevu Landing in Itasiri to visit me and other members of the family. <clears throat> on his visits, he would carry some books of poems, history or literature in Hindi. People in the area knew of his arrival and would gather in the evening at our house to hear father read from the books he had brought with him. Among the books he read from memory were Shur Bir Bhajan Mala, Hindi Sahit Chain, Maharana Pratap. It might be said that he had a small mobile library that he carried on his bicycle. <laughs> Apart from his knowledge of books, and his fluency in Hindi, he possessed a captivating voice and made strong impact on his audience. I was rather young to appreciate my father's knowledge and artistic talents. Towards the end of 1944, the maternal side of my family moved to Nosori town. Now it was possible for me to make greater contact with my grandfather and to observe my father's developing interest in poetry. My father continued to write and publish after his first book, Pravas Bhajananjali, was published in 1947. In 1969, he wrote a booklet, Ramayan Puja Bidhi, outlining in Sangshik, Sang succinct style, the rituals preceding the recital of Ramayana. The book was written at the request of the late Vasudev Agrawal and Ramlal Gupta, and also published by them. In his introduction to the booklet, Venilal Boris himself, a writer and editor of the newspaper, Fiji Sandesh, wrote, and I quote, this booklet would undoubtedly be useful not only to the lovers of the Ramayana, but also to whole of the Hindu community. Being born in Fiji and not having the opportunity to learn Hindi or Sanskrit at any university, the writing of such a practical book by Pandit Pratap Chandra Sharma Ji is indeed very welcome. The inclusion of a photograph of the poet Ravindranath Tagore in the book is interesting. The only reason that I see for having Tagore's photo in the booklet is my father's deep reverence for the great poet and his philosophy. Written some 40 years ago, the booklet is still in circulation in Fiji and the Fiji Indian diaspora. Shall I continue, Satish? Uh, before you do that, uh, let's... Uh... Uh, I've got one observation to, uh, to make and one question. Uh, Azamgarh has produced another world-renowned uh, uh, politician, uh, Sri Basdo uh, Pandeji, I think. Uh, he's, uh, he was the uh, uh, Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago uh, a while ago. And uh, so your... Uh, Ancestral home in uh, Azamgarh is a very, very interesting place. And uh, I would like to visit it uh, when I go to India next. Uh, the question is, Paniji, is uh, uh, have you tried to find out the ancestral roots of your nani or parnani site yet? Uh, 
Uh, yes, yes. Let me have a look. Uh, give me a few minutes, Satish. Okay, whilst, whilst you're having a look, I, I must admit that uh, the information which you have provided uh, here today and shared with us is uh, very, very important. Uh, I certainly did know, know uh, about uh, uh, your links uh, to India and that uh, your great-grandfather had in fact returned uh, to India and your grandfather and you. Uh, grandfather was born uh, in 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 Basti. Uh, yeah, please do continue if you have found the page. Yes, um, so this is, it is interesting mm -hmm. that uh, father was Fiji born. Uh, grandfather was Fiji born, born okay. in Fiji waters. Yes, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, my father was India born. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thanks for re reminding that. Yes. Satish, from memory, my maternal grandparents mm -hmm. came from Basti. Mm -hmm. And uh, like other Girmitias, mm -hmm. they, they served their Girmit period in Nausori. Mm -hmm. My father's name was uh, Gaya Prasad Maharaj. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather, grandmother was Ganga Jali Maharaj. Mm -hmm. They had five children. Mm -hmm. Ram Narayan Maharaj was the eldest, then my mother, then my uncle Ram Lakpat Maharaj, and my two aunts, mm -hmm. Uttam Devi and uh, Suraj Kumari. Mm -hmm. My uncle Ram Narayan Maharaj, after marriage, died. And that was a big tragedy for my grandparents. Mm -hmm. Soon after my mother died, that's something I have not mentioned. Mm -hmm. And uh, after her death, two sides of the family met, my father's side and mother's side, mm -hmm. and decided that it was in, the, in my best interest mm -hmm. that I be brought up with uh, by my mother's side. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I was brought up with great human psychology, mm -hmm. with great love and affection. And not until I began my primary school that I came to know mm -hmm. that my mother had died. Mm -hmm. I always thought that grandmother was my real mom. Mm -hmm. Uh, my Moses were my sisters. Mm -hmm. And uh, even when I discovered that my, my mother had died, I continued to call my nani, amma, and my Moses Bahinias. Very interesting. Yes. And they were very keen on my education. I was uh, enrolled in primary school at the age of five when most students those days enrolled when they were eight or nine. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I was well ahead in the field of education. Yeah, I was and going to come to that, uh, Panditji, because uh, now yeah, yeah, having, sure. uh, having uh, covered uh, your Girmitia background uh, to, to a certain extent, I wanted to know where you were educated, your primary school, high school, and uh, then how you became lawyer and so on. So please go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, shall I start with my early education? Um, 
Yes, let's go, I think, uh, in the chronological order. So uh, we have our understandings where we started. All right. Um, I first went to Nadokaika Hindu Patshala. Nadokaika is a small village near Baulevu Landing. We had to cross the river to go to school. So the settlement where the school was situated was called Nadokaika. Mm. And the place of our residence was called Naitasiri. <clears throat> and I, as I said, uh, Satish, my uncle and other members of the family were very keen on, on my education. Mm -hmm. And uh, after six years at uh, Nadokaika, I came to Nosori and joined Bunimono Area Boys School. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the age of 13, I passed school living certificate. Uh, I would have been one of the youngest to pass that exam at that age. Mm. People think that uh, I come from a very rich family. I don't know why they've got that impression, but I have experienced- Maybe every... because there's the aura around you uh, that suggests that you're very, very smart and rich. <laughs> I have experienced abject poverty in my life, uh, Satish. Mm. The entrance fee for qualifying examination was one dollar, 10 shillings. Mm. The family, that is my mama's side, could not find the required fees. I walked from Bunimono to Koronibia, three kilometers each way to my Mosa. Ram Narayan Maharaj mm -hmm. and requested for a dollar which he happily gave. Mm -hmm. Next day I paid the one dollar to Mr. David Robert, headmaster of the school, who had held the entry form for two days to accommodate me. Mm -hmm. I sat and passed the qualifying exam in 1948 and got above average marks. In 1949, I passed Junior Cambridge and commenced work as a printer's apprentice in government printery. I was in the proof reading section and uh, Mr. Russell Gribble was my immediate foreman. He was from New Zealand a thorough gentleman and a great person in promoting my education. In 1951, I attended evening classes that was run by two Europeans, Mr. Eason and George Arthur, that catered for senior Cambridge exam. After the day's work and evening classes, I bent the min midnight oil in preparing for senior Cambridge examination. Only two of us, Hiran Kumar Sharma, who died and was a very close friend of mine, and I passed the exam through private studies. Can I clarify one thing? I'm a bit surprised. You're working at the time when you took your senior Cambridge. It is so. I used to work full day in government printing office and attend evening classes. So from work, I'd go home, change, come back to the classes, go back home and start my studies. So that and makes I you passing the senior Cambridge uh, even uh, more, uh, more of an achievement because th these days, uh, we hear that uh, our, our children are not allowed to do anything when they're uh, sitting their, their exams for a whole year. 
Uh, Satish, you have read my mind. Uh, for me, passing the senior Cambridge exam was a very important event in my life. It got me promoted from government printing office to the audit department. And more importantly, it was the passport to the University of Tasmania, where I qualified as a lawyer at the end of 1964. Congratulations. Um, it appears that uh, Tasmania was the go-to place for, for uh, would-be Fiji lawyers. Yes, in fact, uh, quite a few Fiji lawyers qualified from there. Uh, the first from memory were Abdul Latif, S.M. Koya, Harold Nair, Devan Patik, uh, Magbul, myself, Anirudh Kuber, Rudra Mishra, and later Bipul Mishra. So, you know, the university has produced quite a few graduates from Fiji. Were any of them with you when you were in Tasmania? Yes. Rudra Mishra was ahead of me. Mm. And Ruth Kuber was ahead of me. Mm. Mumtaz Ali Makbul and I were in the same form. Uh, Motilal Ram Ritu, who died, he was ahead of us. And there were other students, of course. Ambika Prasad was uh, uh, doing a degree in arts. He was the first local principal of Anasinu Training College. Yeah, very interesting. Please, uh, yeah, indulge with me when I ask some of these questions to uh, to elicit more more information. Please go ahead. And. Uh, we had one advantage those days. After two years at the university, for the next three years, we are required to serve as article clerks in a lawyer's firm. Mm -hmm. That gave us practical experience as well as remuneration, which was very helpful to students like myself, who was always short of funds. And- uh, Where did it take place? Was it in Tasmania or back in Fiji? Not in Tasmania. Okay. After two years, mm -hmm. you see, it was a five year course. Mm -hmm. After two years at the university, we were required to serve as article clerks in the next three years, for the next three years, which gave us practical experience. And as I said, also uh, some wages mm -hmm. that was very helpful. And uh, after saving my Articles. I worked as a junior to Mr. Hodgman, W.C. Hodgman. Hodgman's are a household name in Tasmania. Mm -hmm. uh, I think his grandson, Wills Hodgman, was the uh, premier before the present one of Tasmania. His son, Michael Hodgman, also served in federal parliament. So it was quite a privilege to work for. Uh, uh, Mr. Hodgman Sr. And he was one of the best court lawyers in the country at that time. And uh, I gave, I gained fair experience working under him. So indeed, so you had a very good uh, experience and you obviously passed your uh, law degree and then you would have returned to Fiji, I suppose. And uh... yes, at the end of 1964, I returned to Fiji. No, sorry. At the end of 1965, I returned to Fiji and joined SM Koya, who had opened a new branch in Nandi. Uh, that was the first time I moved to the Western Division. Mm. And after working for Mr. Koya for two years, Mr. A.D. Patel offered me employment at twice the salary I was receiving. Mm. So I joined Mr. Patel mm. and uh, life changed for the better after I joined A.D. Patel and company. 
Why do you say that? Well, first, apart from the more money, he was uh, it was a great experience to sit in the same office as Mr. Patel and hear his philosophies. Uh, he was a man of very wide experience. And uh, not only was he a good politician, he gave dignity to the Indian community Satish. And uh, there's one incident I remember when he started practicing Reiki Reiki from memory. Those days, farmers were paid in envelopes. The overseer would go and give the envelope to the farmer. And sometime the envelope only co contained coins and no notes. Mm -hmm. This particular farmer experienced the same situation and he went complaining to this overseer who, I to who I'm told was very bad tempered. Mm -hmm. So instead of listening to his complaint, he brought him out of the office gave a kick on his bum and he fled, uh, fell flat on the ground. The matter was reported to the police who took no action. Mr. Patel brought private prosecution against this man. And when, when he received the summons, he barged into Mr. Patel's office without any appointment and waiving the rate of summons, he said, what is this? Mm -hmm. And Mr. Patel was also a very courageous man. He said, look, if you don't go out of my office immediately, I'll call the police. And he went away. Anyway, coming to the gist of the story, when he was tried before a magistrate, Mr. Patel knew his temper. In, in, in cross-examination, he got him so irritated that he said, yes, I kicked, so what? Mm -hmm. And then Mr. Patel said to the magistrate, your worship, need I cross-examine this man any further? He said, no, and he was fined 10 shillings, mm -hmm. which was a big amount those days. So that's why I'm saying that mm -hmm. you know, life changed for the better. And uh, at that time, they had walked out of the council against the iniquities of the constitution. Mm -hmm. And I, I, come, I attended all his meetings, mm -hmm. and which helped me in later life in my own campaign. Yeah, so I'll take it uh, maybe it's because of uh, Mr. Patel's uh, influence that uh, you uh, perhaps entered the politics as well? Satish, that is an interesting question. I was working for Koyan Company, and in 1967, the first municipal elections were held on common role basis. I had no intention whatsoever of going into politics. But Mr. Patel, Mr. Koya, and Mr. R.K. Sharma, who was like a father to me, he was editor of uh, Jagriti at that time. I used to board and lodge with him. These three worked together and virtually pushed me into municipal elections. And that was my first entry in 1967. I contested as a councillor for Nandy Town Council. Those days elections were held every two years. From, so from 67 to 70, I was a councillor. But before my term in council expired, I was appointed to the Senate, which was quite a surprise to me. And from uh, there on, there was no looking back. Yeah, before I ask you how you got appoint, uh, appointed uh, there in the Senate, uh, I'd like to share a similar, similar story. 
uh, that uh, I was also in a way, you know, selected by people to become a counselor uh, in London uh, in 1990. Uh, I had no intention to be a politician, but uh, uh, I gave it up in 1994, unlike uh, you, which you uh, continue to be a long-term uh, politician, ending up being, uh, I think, deputy prime minister at one stage. So please tell me that the, the beginning of the journey. When I became the deputy prime minister, no, uh, the, the the beginning when you from councillor, uh, you were nominated uh, to the senate. Yes, and before my senate term expired, I was endorsed on NAP a party ticket to fight the general elections, and. I entered the House of Representatives in 1972 as a member of Hosinga Toka area. Mm -hmm. Who then, are some of your contemporaries? I think the, the, the audience would, would like to know some of the prominent uh, politicians of that era who were with you at the time. Well, amongst the Itauke, Ita okay, there was, uh, of course, Ratuse Kamise Semara. Ratu Sepeneya, um, Junate Mavoa, the Tongni Valu brothers. Mm. And uh, on our side, we had Ram Jati Singh, James Madhwan, Siddhi Koya, Mrs. Irene J. Narayan, Karam Ram Rakha. Um, was Mr. Tora with you there? Yes, 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 of course. Of course. Um, Tora joined us later. Mm -hmm. And when we won the 1977 elections, well, we didn't really win it. Out of 42 seats, we had, 20, um, out of 52 seats, we had 26. Mm -hmm. Mara was, uh, sorry. Tora was one of the members on our oh, side. So, so yeah, yeah. And um, after the confusion of 1977, Tora left. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in 1977, I recall the first election was, uh, there was a contributing uh, factor of uh, Butun party. Your observation is spot on, Satish. In fact, we did not win the elections. Mm. Bhutan Roka gave us the victory by dividing the Fijian votes, mm -hmm. which ended up uh, in the alliance of in the defeat of alliance. Mm. But our own party was so divided that we could not form the government. I mean, it's all very well to blame the governor general and so forth. But the truth of the matter is that under the Westminster system, the, le the leader of the opposition is the next prime minister. And having won the elections, Sitkoya automatically should have been the prime minister. Mm -hmm. But there was a deep division within the party and Karam Ramraka said, no, we must choose a leader. And lo and behold, there were two names given. Sid Koyes and Maitongas. Maitonga was from Labasa. And on the first count, you wouldn't believe, each one received equal votes. 13, 13. Mm -hmm. Then someone suggested that the name should be drawn from a hat, and Mr. Koya said, no, let's have another uh, election. Mm -hmm. And in that, someone jumped from Maitonga's side to Koya's side, and he won by two votes. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of dilly-dallying, and uh, as later events proved, 
even at this stage, the party was badly divided. Yeah, I'm glad you're sharing your thoughts on this, uh, you know, uh, important episode uh, in Fiji's political history, because as you know, I already had uh, a documentary made with uh, Mr. Ramraka. Uh, so uh, this is uh, a second politician of that era uh, today sharing uh, his, uh, his view. And I, we, we let the audience uh, uh, decide uh, which uh, view or uh, whether both views have merit. So it's an opportunity for you uh, to clarify that point, uh, Pandiji. Yes, I'm, I'm being very frank and impartial in what I'm saying, uh, mm. uh, Satish. Mm. Uh, as, a, as, as a teenager at the time, I, I recall that episode. Uh, and uh, we were all very disappointed uh, that Mr. Kwe uh, did not eventually uh, become the first Indian Prime Minister of Fiji. And uh, we were angry at, uh, at uh, uh, Rathuseka Kamisese Mara being, uh, being uh, you know, imposed as they were the Prime Minister again. And also the conflict within the National Federation Party and after so many years, uh, somehow the truth is, is coming out now. And I think our, our community needs to know what, what actually happened. But what followed Pandiji after that was even worse when the National Federation Party got divided. Yes, let me come back to uh, um, uh, Sitko's failure to become the prime minister. Mm -hmm. Sid was also partly responsible for that, Satish, mm. because once he was elected to be the prime minister, he started dishing out portfolios to his chumchas, if I might put it that way. Mm. And uh, both Jeram Reddy and myself said to him, go and get sworn in as a prime minister. And then you uh, distribute the portfolios as you want. And when he announced that Subramani Basweya was to be the Minister of Finance, mm. Clinton Boyd, Boyen, who, was, who had joined the party for the first time, thundered. He said, this portfolio has always gone to general electors. He expected to be the Minister of Finance. And members of the news media were not far from where these negotiations were going on. And I wouldn't be surprised if someone came to know that there was dispute within the party. And uh, I'm purely guessing, instead of blaming Mrs. J and uh, Karam for ringing the governor general, who knows, one of the reporters may have Past this information, um, and that's a, a, a that's a possibility. Yeah. That's Sorry. Uh, coming to 1977, second election, the party was divided across the center. Dove and flower factions, mm -hmm. and uh, the meetings we had. You may recall that famous meeting in Suva where there was a tug of war for the microphone between Sitkwai and Karam Ram Raka. I don't recall that, Paniji, because I was still very, very young. I was I was in Suva then, but I don't recall that. Please do share that in, in Yes, but that happened. And the meeting was called by the flower faction. I traveled from Nandi to Suva to attend the meeting, and I was one of the speakers. As the meeting was ending, Sitkoya entered the theater to the applause of his supporters. And uh, came and grabbed the, tele uh, the microphone. And Karam also grabbed it. So there was a tug of war for the position of the <laughs> Okay. And 
that picture was beautifully photographed and placed all over the country. It's a very historical picture. Not a great picture for the community. <laughs> yes. And uh, I was sitting next, next to Mrs. J. His, and she said, Harish Bhai, we called the meeting and Mr. Koya has taken over. What do we do? Mm. And I said, we should walk out. Mm -hmm. Krishnanan Choudhury, who was the chairman of the meeting, this declares the meeting closed and we walked out. And as we walked out, so this two thirds of the crowd walked out with us. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, Chandradeva Sharma, who was a deputy commissioner of police, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, we had been at school together. Mm -hmm. He came to me and said, Harish, I'll take you to the car mm -hmm. and suggest that you drive away to Nandi as soon as you can. And I did that and sighed a breath of relief when I reached Nandi. Yeah, and uh, you know, the trouble caused over there and you know, the election campaigns and things like that uh, resulted in a huge defeat for the National uh, Federation Party in that election. You're quite right, Satish. From 26 seats, we were reduced to 15 seats. Sitkoya was defeated by Jaram Reddy. Mm -hmm. Jaram Reddy became the new leader of opposition. Mm -hmm. And I was unanimously elected to serve as deputy, as deputy speaker of parliament. Mm -hmm. And uh, Moses Gioni Baravia was the speaker. He was one of the most liberal and forward-looking Itaukei that I have come across. I had a very good rapport with him and have a lot of respect for the man. It's unfortunate that he his time, death was untimely. He could have you know, given so much to the community. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, indeed, uh, going on, I think uh, National Federation Party, after that for a long time, uh, did not recover, and that gave rise to uh, uh, the Fiji Labour Party. That is so. And more than alliance, they were our greater opponents. And eventually finished NFP because in uh, 1988 elections, we didn't win a single seat. I had retired by then. Okay, so... Uh, you, you escaped that embarrassment. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But uh, the journey has moved forward. Uh, today, Labour Party has also gone into oblivion. And National Federation Party is, 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 has made uh, some sort of uh, comeback uh, under the leadership of uh, Professor Biman Prasad. Yes. Allow me to cover the period 1982 to 1987, Satish. Okay. Uh, in 1982, Jeram Reddy, with great effort, tact and courage, reunited the party. And from, 60, from 15 seats, we increased the number to 24 seats. Mm. Sid Kwaya was amongst the people who won. Mm -hmm. Then, in 19, from memory, in 1984, Jeram had serious disagreements with the Speaker, Vakatora, mm -hmm. and walked out of Parliament and finally resigned. He was succeeded by Sid Koya. After two years, in May 1987, I succeeded Sid Koya as leader of the opposition. Well, this news to and me, for, well, most, most other people. So, uh, yeah. yeah, please do tell us. And uh, although Sid would call me once or twice a week and say, Harish, everyone wants leadership. Here, I'm giving it to you and you're not taking it. And <laughs> 
when he was presented with a signature of most of the party members that they wanted me to be the leader of opposition, mm -hmm. he again called and harangued me and he said, you of all the people have stabbed me in the back. And I said, Mr. Koya, you've been asking me to take the leadership. Here's, an, here's a very good opportunity for you to give it to me. <laughs> and for public consumption, we got together Mm -hmm. And he blessed me and said, I'm voluntarily leaving. Then thereafter, I made every effort to form coalition with Fiji Labour Party. Initially, I got rebuffed. Mm -hmm. But after some time, I convinced them that the only way to defeat the Alliance Party was to form coalition, which we did. And then in 1987, as history shows, we defeated the Alliance Party. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was appointed, I was given three portfolios, Deputy Prime Minister, mm -hmm. Minister for Housing and Urban Development, and Minister for Information. Then after a month, we were deposed by Rambuka's first military coup. Uh, I think a lot of people are wondering uh, what uh, Fiji would have been had uh, that uh, government uh, survived for the, the full term. Uh, would you like to share your thoughts uh, of that government and where it would have taken Fiji? Satish, I have no doubts whatsoever that Fiji would have been something like Hawaii, just giving an example. It would have advanced by leaps and bounds and succeeded in all aspects of life, particularly economically. Mm. There was a lawyer called Miles Johnson. His father was in parliament, came from a very well-known European family. I had known him before I went to do law. By appointment, he came to my office with a plan. Mm -hmm. This is in 1987. And he showed me the plan and he said there was a company that was going to sink $140 million in the Dinarau area. That was in 1987. Mm -hmm. And uh, many people of Indo-Fijian uh, descent, we're thinking of going back to Fiji. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, I think um, with respect, Sitiveni Rambuka and everyone that was behind him have done untold harm to Fiji and its future. Fiji will never be the same as it was before 1987. In 1987, the Fijian dollar was stronger than the Australian dollar. So you can... I know, I, uh, sitting in the library in Greenwich in London, I was uh, comparing the GDP of all the countries uh, in around 80s. And there was the first world country and the communist country and the third world country. And before the uh, communist, uh, uh, below the communist country, there's only one entry, and that was Fiji's. And they could not put it in communist country or the first world country because, uh, so they had a separate uh, a column where Fiji's GDP was almost as good as uh, the first world country. Uh, and, and today, I don't think uh, probably is somewhere uh, in the third world country. And, yes, we're uh, speaking the same language, uh, Satish, as, as far as we is concerned. Yes, and uh, before going to, 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 to London in 1980, we know Fiji was uh, called uh, uh, the way the world should be. And, uh, yes, so, it, was the, it was the Pope who said, I think. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so uh, 1987 happened. Uh, and uh, that's when I think a lot of uh, descendants of Girmitiers 
and other individuals uh, started to flee Fiji. Uh, so do you recall that, uh, that era and then how and when you decided to uh, leave Fiji? Satish, before I come to that, there's one important aspect of my life I have missed. Please do tell us. Uh, after my return to Fiji, I was under tremendous pressure to get married. Mm -hmm. In February 1968, I was married to Ambika Devi Singh. A Nepalese family from Brown Street, Suva. Mm -hmm. My arranged marriage was a life changer. Ambika was extremely beautiful, good character, caring, and kind wife. She has been an exceptionally good mother to all our three children, Aman, Sunena, and Abichal and a proud grandmother to six grandchildren, Prane and Alka, Aman and Susie's children, Vinith and Sapna, James and Sunaina's children, the daughter at who, who, whose house we are, I'm sitting, yeah. Anusha and Rohan, Avchal and Priya's children. But Nepalese, as you know, are well known for their courage all over the world. Yes. And when I was taken a political prisoner, Ambika showed her courage. Mm -hmm. She looked after the three children, did not panic. And with my daughter came to visit me when I was a political prisoner. Mm -hmm. There I think she controlled herself, became very emotional, and both of them started crying. And the soldier who was guarding me said, Hari, Mr. Sharma, you've only got two minutes. I said, but others have got five minutes. He said, yes, but my instructions are that your interview will finish in two minutes. Mm -hmm. Satish, believe me, there were two soldiers mm -hmm. and they were crying as much as my wife and daughter were crying. And I ended up getting more than five minutes. I don't know who those soldiers were, but it just shows that human beings don't differ very much, you know. They don't. They, they don't uh, uh, indeed. And uh, sorry, I forgot about that. Uh, uh, we must devote uh, more time, a separate uh, conversation with a number of uh, your f uh, fellow political uh, uh, prisoners separately, person in person. They have narrated, few of them narrated their stories. Uh, Professor Nandan, uh, Dr. Ganesh yeah. Chand, and others. Uh, it would be good uh, to bring you all together so that uh, you can uh, share your stories. Uh, it must have been dreadful. I've read about that. I think Professor Nandan has written about it. Uh, so it must have been a horrible time because uh, uh, that coup was totally unexpected and uh, we did not uh, believe that it could happen in a place like Fiji. Uh, but uh, that episode of the, the, the soldiers crying, I've heard that story uh, repeated by other people as well. We are human beings, all of us. Yeah. There are two incidents worth discussing, worth reporting, Satish. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> On a Saturday evening, I was... standing in front of the house where we were incarcerated, lost in my thoughts. And Donu, I think he was the man that led the coup with binoculars, came and said, 
Mr. Sharma, would you go and call Mr. Krishna that? I went and Krishna was fast asleep. He loves his sleep. And uh, I said, Krishna, there's a soldier wanting to see you. So he turned from one side to the other and said, go and tell him that I'm sleeping. So I went back and reported and he said, please go and tell him that the matter is more serious. If he doesn't come, I'll have to get, get him. So both of us walked together. And he said his instructions are to take two people out of this crowd. And uh, Krishna said, who are those two? He said, you two. So both of us told Donu that, sorry, we'll have to go and tell this to our leader. We went back and both Jay and Dr. Bhavandra said that if we are going, we're all going together, otherwise no one is going to go. So I went and told Donu, went back and we started praying. Mm -hmm. Never ending prayers. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Bhavandra called this man and said, look, Go and tell your boss what our stand is. Mm. She so went, came back, and said, we've got good news for you. We have decided not to take anyone from here. But they had another plan, Satish. Mm. Next morning, Sunday morning, number of soldiers came and literally tried to separate the Indian parliamentarians from the Fijian parliamentarians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we demonstrated passive resistance. We locked our hands. And uh, there was a struggle between the soldiers and all of us that were uh, imprisoned. Um, Dr. Bhavandra's wife, I can't remember her name. She was said, Queenie? Queenie? Andy Queenie, right. Thank you. She said on Sunday, she started crying and said on Sunday morning, you should be attending church instead of doing what you're doing. And she released my hands. I was sandwiched between Andy Queenie and um, Temu Sokunai Valu. Temu also released my hand. So I was the first one to be carried away, perhaps the lightest of the gang. Mm -hmm. And I was dumped in a waiting vehicle. Then all others, you know, finally were dumped in the same vehicle and we were, we were driven to Boren House. Mm -hmm. Now that was a glaring example of physically separating the people of two communities. Mm. And uh, later I asked them, oh, I said, so Temo, did they manage to do that, uh, Pandiji? Because did they take Indians to Boron House only or, or both uh, Fijians and Indians? No, only Indians were taken there. That's what I'm saying. They were okay. separated. Okay. And my Fijian, you know, French were left where they were, mm -hmm. and the Indians were carted like animals mm -hmm. to foreign house. And uh, sometime later, I asked Temo, I said, Temo, I can understand why Andy Queenie released my hands. Mm -hmm. Why did you do that? And he said, Harish, let me see your hands. I did that. Mm -hmm. And then he stated his hands, which were twice my size. He says, on the, spur of the, on the spare of the moment, I thought your hands might get dislocated. So I released you. Mm -hmm. So there was a great uh, comradeship, 
a friendship between all the uh, all the people, all the MPs who were incarcerated. Uh, but it was unfortunate uh, that uh, they did this uh, to to all of you. How long? I don't remember now. It was such a long time. How long was the incarceration? About six days. I think we were taken prisoners on 14th of May. That was a Thursday. <clears throat> and uh, Thursday, Friday, Thursday. Released on, Thursday, on Sunday from memory or... Uh, no. Yeah, about six days we were... Uh, taken as business, Satish. So what happened afterward? It, it, it was a traumatic experience for everybody. Uh, was there any, any support, any counseling, any, anything uh, of, of help provided to all of you? No, not that I know of. No, so you, you carry that, uh, I can see that, uh, you carry that, uh, that uh, the trauma uh, probably until today, and uh, well, later on, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Choudhury and his group, group would have uh, uh, have subjected to the same trauma for longer period. So, uh, this side of the story, I don't think uh, our community has had before. So, thanks for sharing that with with all of us. Thank you, Satish. And I uh, must say that uh, I, only a few weeks ago, I met your beautiful wife uh, after that uh, lunch with the Professor Nandan. And uh, we also shared uh, a birthday party of my cousin, Moti Rai. I was going to ask yes. you, as uh, just uh, departing from the, the main topic, uh, how you got to know uh, my cousin Moti? Moti was a court clerk in Nandi when I started practice. And he's now court clerks and lawyers have a lot to do with each other. Mm -hmm. So the friendship started there. Then he was transferred to Lotoka. Mm -hmm. And again, I visited Lotoka quite often. Then finally, the only unqualified person to hold the position of the Registrar of Court was Moti in Suva. Mm. And whenever I went to Parliament, I visited him. So this association gradually developed into a very strong friendship. But uh, Satish, when I met his wife, Maya, for the first time. She straightway said, you are my brother. And has never shifted her position. So we have a strange relationship. Moti is my brother and Maya is my sister. <laughs> yes. And uh, Satish, the relationship is so deep that they ring me once or twice a week. And every Raksha Bandhan without fail, Maya will send me Raksha Bandhan. I'm getting a bit emotional. And uh, mm -hmm. take out of sweets. So that answers your question as to how I got close to Moti Rai. Yeah, I wanted to ask uh, you about your relocation. Uh, relox collection of three other people. Uh, they are MPs from my village of Natambua, Saru Natambua, one is late uh, Suren Prasadji, uh, and uh, C.A. Shah, and uh, Muhammad Ramzan, and they're from my village. And uh, you would probably recall uh, them sharing. Yes, Muhammad Ramzan, C.A. Shah, and who was the third one? Uh, Suren Prasadji. I'll, I'll start with Suren Prasad. Suren Prasad came from a very rich family mm. and uh, had established a very successful lawyer's firm. And 
whatever he touched, if I may so, turned into gold. He was mayor of Lotoka. Uh, he was also in the 1977 elections and was to be the speaker who formed the government. Uh, after he migrated to Australia, I met him on several occasions and uh, enjoyed cordial relationship with him and his wife, Uma. Chirag Ali Shah was a very likable person uh, with a rare sense of humor. In fact, uh, I'm told that Bhutan Roka means half cooked. And uh, once, uh, once Sakyasi, Sak Sakyasi was speaking and he said, don't give us half cooked stories. <laughs> um, very sincere to the party. Deeply attached to A.D. Patel. A.D. was the person that brought him here. I think before he joined the party, he was a nominated member. And uh, in the first 72 May, the by-election after the walkout, mm -hmm. MT Khan wanted Chiragali Sahasheet. Mm -hmm. Mr. Patel sent him to no sorry, sent Empty Khan to know, sorry. Both won. Mm -hmm. But it just shows that, you know, Mr. Patel was a little partial towards uh, mm -hmm. uh, Chirag. Mohammed Ramzan was a very principled man. I had a lot of respect for him, and my relationship with him was very cordial. He held a number of portfolios in Alliance government and uh, acquitted himself with dignity and honor. There was no, no talk about him of anything unfair that he had done. So, as you said, you know, there were three politicians from your area and I have high respect for all of them. Yeah, it considers that uh, Mr. Prasad's ancestral village is in, uh... Gorakhpur uh, area, and I, I did uh, visit the village uh, when uh, I was making my first documentary, Milap, and uh, his ancestors are uh, are uh, featured in that uh, documentary film. Now you mentioned that uh, you you did meet uh, Mr. Prasad here in Sydney. So when did you decide uh, to leave? Uh, Fiji and uh, to settle in Australia. Satish, I had no intention of leaving Fiji. In fact, I wanted to spend my last days in that country. But there was one incident that made me change my mind. That was in, from memory, November 2002. A robber entered our house. And our next to our neighbor was a police woman and her husband was a civil servant. And this was at six in the morning. And he, of course we were sleeping quite freely, you know, not expecting anything like what happened. He entered our bedroom and my wife yelled. So both got up and he said, give me money, give me money. And I said, we have no money. And in fact, we had no money. So he fought. My wife snatched his vernacular bar so he could see his face. This police woman that I'm talking about, we're living in one flat and this person was living in the adjoining flat. And they were both outside when this incident happened. 
So I said to this Ital Ital man, I said, "There's a beggar in our house." He said, "Yes, I know, but he's got weapons, and I have none." He had no weapons. So he went out. And when he found out that he had got nothing, he came back, Satish. He snatched my wife's necklace and went away. The matter was reported to the police. Nothing happened. When my children heard this, Sunan and Abishal, they took a special flight to Nandi and gave my wife and myself ultimatum, saying that we don't want to come to see your dead bodies within this within this uh, within the next two or three months. You must migrate. So I had PR. My wife was already a citizen of Australia. And that's when I decided to leave Fiji. And uh, in... Uh, it must have I been very, very... In January 2003, I, I came. It was very painful to leave the country, Satish. And that was following the... Uh, that time, I remember, it was uh, following the 2000 coup. Uh, there were a lot of attacks uh, going on all over the places as well. And so it was a, a couple of years after that uh, coup that it happened to you as well. There were two very bad coups. The second coup in 1987 mm -hmm. was the West. Mm -hmm. If they had found Jeram Reddy, I think he, he would have been a dead man. Mm. Same thing applies to Mahan Choudhury. By mm. sheer coincidence, I happened to be in Australia at that time. They were also looking for me. Uh, that was the, the 2000 coup? Or no, 1987, mm. second coup. The second coup. Yeah. In September. Yeah. Yeah, I only observed observe that, um, that coup from... Uh, my bedroom in, in, in London. And that's when I decided uh, that, uh, you know, Fiji was no longer my home because we never expected uh, having grown in Fiji and, uh, uh, you know, uh, mingled with everybody, worked with everybody. Race was not an issue to see all those things happening, unfolding, you know, was uh, was heart shattering. And, uh, so from a distance, it, it was so to me, but uh, you and thousands of uh, Indo-Fijians experienced that in Fiji. It must have been worse. Uh, so you arrived rather a little, uh, you know, you didn't want to come to, to Australia, but uh, you were in a way forced to leave the, your beloved Fiji. Uh, yes. So what, what have you been doing? Uh, a man like you cannot uh, sit still. So tell us a bit about that. Satish, I read a fair bit, do some work on computer, do a lot of gardening, spend some time with family members, I regularly attend um, the temple at Austral, where I meet a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. I also visit family members. Um, sometime back, I compiled a book of poet poems written by my father. That took some time. In fact, uh, this is the book. And yes. uh, presently, I'm writing my memoirs. That takes a fair bit of my time. Yeah. So 
It, it, it's, it's, it depends on the individual. I mean, if he wants to keep busy, there is always something to do. And I'm always doing something. So that is a secret to your uh, youthful look. <laughs> Thank you, Satish. You have maintained yourself uh, uh, very well. And uh, you not only look good on the screen, I met you recently in person. Uh, you look very, very uh, good. Uh, I think we have covered a lot today. Uh, uh, as I said, you know, uh, we probably will get together with some of your uh, fellow politicians and 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 uh, professionals one day and have a little of little bit of yarn about good old days in Fiji and maybe good old days uh, present days in in Australia. But before we conclude our discussion today, our conversation today, uh, please feel free to share anything else you, you wish uh, to, uh, as you re uh, recollect about uh, your days in Fiji or something which you have missed uh, whilst you're living in Australia. Satish, as I said that I served Sanatan Pratiniti Sabha of Fiji for 10 years, and upon my retirement, I was awarded the highest award of Sanatan Ratan. And uh, Anaji, uh, that uh, ask your grandson to take a picture of that uh, that plaque, and if you can send it to me, I will share that with uh, with uh, the audience because uh, it's, it's a great uh, great representation of your. Uh, contribution to the Sanatan Dharma. Yes, and I was also awarded Officer of the Order of Fiji. Excellent. I, I yeah, take I can't see that one because of the light lighting, uh, you know, the camera doesn't pick it up unfortunately. Uh, okay. so if your grandson can uh, send me uh, that picture any anything you you want to share the awards please ask him to send me the picture and i'll share that uh, with the audience yes um i've also served as uh, president of fiji law society uh, in 19 for two years 1988 and 1989 no one wanted to take the presidentship in those turbulent years. In the end, at the request of young lawyers, I agreed and uh, was made life member of Fiji Law Society and also given a special certificate of appreciation. Anyway, I will ask my grandson to photograph all this and send it to you. Yeah. Also, also the cover page of your uh, your uh, beautiful uh, book of poetry of your uh, of your father. Sure, sure. Yeah, Pandiji, I think uh, the audience has got to know a lot about uh, you and your great achievements and contribution uh, to to Fiji. Uh, we will, I think, uh, it's very easy to talk to you uh, and uh, time permits uh, and opportunity arises, we'll talk again more about uh, what you've done. I hope you uh, uh, successfully uh, write your memoirs. And once you've done that, uh, we'll talk more about that as well, because uh, writing the memoir, you will be able to recollect much more of your life's uh, journey. And uh, I'm sure you'd like to uh, share that uh, uh, on video uh, with people across the world. Uh, so your last words before we conclude. Well, Satish, I'm reaching towards the end of my earthly journey. I'll be 90 next year. And Look, looking forward to a, a grand, uh, grand uh, get together on that occasion, Pandiji. Thank you. And uh, 
I pray to God that give me the courage and the strength to save the community in whatever way I can while the going is good. I have enjoyed more than 50 years of matrimonial bliss and uh, hope it will last for a few more years. I'm in a very happy position. All my children, my daughter-in-laws, my grandchildren are very caring. And I don't think I could wish for much more. God has given me good health, good friends like you, Satish. And uh, I'm most grateful for the interview and consider it my pleasure to know you. And I hope we will keep in touch. So Panditji, uh, uh, Sanatan Vedic Dharam says uh, we believe in karma. Uh, you have contributed greatly to our, our uh, community in Fiji over here. And so karma has been kind to you. Uh, you're looking great. You've got a beautiful family. And uh, thank you for giving your time and sharing your, uh, your story with all of us. Uh, it will be and it is going to be uh, an inspiration uh, to our community, not only in Fiji, but in the Fijian diaspora, uh, as well as in the, in the Indian diaspora. So thank you again, Pandeji, and uh, goodbye. Namaskar. Thank you, Shri.